Hello my Soccer Universe and welcome to the Liga Ere Divisie review for uh, this past week, uh, I have to say, because we had a midweek, a midweek game in Liga 1 as well that we have to talk about. You saw the title, I think we will talk a whole lot about PSG, hence I'm wearing PSG and hence we will be uh, actually starting with Liga 1. And I would say let's get right uh, to it. The midweek game was uh, on Wednesday, it was kind of the replay of this voided 1-0 uh, between Nice and Marseille, where uh, Nice took an early lead through Guiri. Uh, it seemed like the better team uh, throughout and then uh, Payet gets an equalizer and then the whole game dies down. It was played, of course, in Troyes on an, a neutral venue. Yeah, uh, I found it a little bit ironic that Payet, who actually was one of the originators of the whole brawl, got the point from Marseille. The result did not change much in terms of the table and so I guess uh, we should not talk a whole lot about it more. However, the big clash then happened on Friday evening between PSG and Lille. And boy, is PSG an enigma. I mean, you play, Mbappé was out, but you play uh, Di Maria, you play a Messi, you play a Neymar, and PSG looked abject. I mean, uh, you can see slight flashes of the brilliance that is on the field, but if you have a good or or organization on the back, there is no problem for Lille containing them. Lille should have scored more than the one goal that they did. They were so much better in the first half. Well or organized first, absorbed a little bit PSG and then ventured out on their own and actually dominated the Parisians uh, in in many ways. And the way Buddha Gilma set up uh, John of Davis was one of those uh, prime examples. Lille thoroughly deserving the one nil lead psg looking really like the pieces of a puzzle that don't fit together you could also see that messi who was a non-factor uh seemingly was not fit and suddenly he doesn't show up for the second half any, anymore it really seemed that he might have uh, a little muscle problem and uh you know i don't want to get into why is messi not getting going psg and so on um a he scored in the champ 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 champions league b he joined the squad kind of late. He did not have a full preseason there. Um, it is a new environment for him. One that he has to get very comfortable with yet. So uh, it's not a... Th uh, he, and his position is also not very well defined. I think Pochettino hasn't figured it out uh, quite yet. So he put uh, Icardi in, which, which is a much more... I mean, Messi plays a false nine, kind of a play. There's a nine in the middle. Uh, Icardi then is much better in this role. Um, and slowly, it did not look right, but slowly it started working a little bit, but it was mostly down to really being there. Um, the brilliance shone more through than that there was more of a, a play uh, in there. And it was all down to Di Maria in many ways. I mean, the way he set up Marquinhos to get the equalizer, uh, that was individual brilliance. Uh, and it was Di Maria who in the end decided it uh, after assist by Neymar. He slams, slams it home to give um, PSG a rather lucky win. I have, I have to say, when Messi went out and there's only Neymar and Di Maria, I think this works a whole lot better with Icardi kind of this focal point. This works a whole lot better than if you want to play all the Galacticos uh, in a way. I know Messi was a non-factor, maybe a great Messi. You know, they figured it out between Messi, Neymar and Suarez uh, about five, uh, six years ago. So I'm not saying this cannot work. However, I have the feeling that Pochettino is not the person that can make it work and that this PSG dressing room in particular is a really tough one to get a hold of. Uh, I think this is the biggest problem at PSG for team building because uh, suddenly we saw that Tuchel was... Uh, almost desperate and kind of failing and he goes to Chelsea within half a year he has some Champions League winner and now set to a Premier League title potentially uh, so there is something about this PSG dressing room that needs to be addressed and I was actually thinking that maybe a Messi can change that seemingly he has not changed it quite yet and then Mbappé and Neymar two divas out there uh, I think it's a puzzle I honestly think uh you cannot play them all. I think you have to substitute in a way. 
Messi needs to have a much freer role. Don't put him out on the wing. And I think similar goes for Neymar. Uh, you almost need to do kind of your play one half Neymar, play one half Messi or something to that of that order. Maybe sometimes a little bit too, too, too together. But this needs to be figured out. I just feel that Pochettino is not ready to do that. Uh, or he is not able to do it or whatever. And I would not find another coach at the moment who would be able to do it. I mean, uh, now you would m maybe yell at me, Conte. I don't think that Conte will have any chance against those. Uh, I think he will more um, annoy the superstars. And I said it in, in my video that I, and now that I said Messi is coming, that I did on the beach. Uh, it will be something to watch. It will be a sight to behold, but it will be an abject failure. And yeah, I think we're seeing this or, or, or already. And that you cannot get Gini Van Aldum to work as well is also something that it does not quite seem right. Um, so yeah, I don't know what's exactly happening, but there needs to be a little bit more structure in play. You need to find a way that you can, with all these free spirits up front, that you can absorb... Uh, you know, that they have a midfield that they can actually keep the supply line up. Uh, not that a team like Ren did it just cuts off the supply line and he let them hanging up front. And then you have basically six players defending with four up front kind of hanging around. That will never work. So that's my thoughts on PSG. I also saw a little bit of Lyon against Lens, which, which was actually, I mean, PSG Lille was uh, based on what was happening last season, the big clash. But I think when you look at the table, Lyon against Lens, that was the big clash. And I think Lyon really, I mean, I didn't see too, too much because I was shooting at the same time the Premier League uh, jersey review. Uh, but for what, 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 what I can say, Lyon was the better team. Uh, with Toko Kambi and Awa scoring already two um, goals in the first half, there was a disallowed goal, but I always had the feeling that Lyon had control of the game. Uh, second half, uh, Camuendo uh, gets a goal back for Lance, but I think overall um Lyon deserved that win uh other results you know didn't see much i mean uh Bordeaux kind of seems to get going Saint Saint at Metz this was kind of a down the table clash ends only in in, in a draw uh big one Monaco losing at Brest Monaco in deep deep trouble and Marseille uh get late yesterday a win at Clermont overall um so uh, big clashes next week. I mean, Bordeaux PSG sounds like a classic, but it's it's it's, it's a real one. It's all uh, Rennes against Lyon. I think that's uh, that's the one, the last one that uh, might be the most interesting one. Lille against, Lille against Angers. Yeah, this is where Lille cl uh, clinched the title. So I would say we move over to the Eredivisie. Where again, I cannot tell you much. I saw a teeny bit of PSV uh, play against Twente where uh, Twente took a lead through Flop, then Vertes and Sahavi, Sahavi was a uh, really ni nicely played goal, um, put PSV uh, in the lead, but uh, watch the, if you have highlights, uh, for Wolfswinkel plays it to Zeruki, but it was kind of, he, Zeruki in a way, got the ball, was not a good composition, takes a shot, and it goes right in the corner. Beautiful goal, but absolutely, he, I'm not sure he will be able to repeat that, that one. But then in the second half, very quickly PSV, through the test, and Carlos Vinicius with two goals, turned around, put PSV uh, on uh, the winning uh, streak again. Remember, they lost very big at Ajax, who themselves only managed a nil-nil draw at Heracles. I have a feeling, like what is on the Premier League, it was more, yeah, let's take it a little bit easy because we have the big clash in Dortmund uh, coming up. That is my, uh, but you know, other than that, kind of a little bit embarrassing. And then also uh, Feyenoord gets a very, very late win, and that's why they're up on top up there. Uh, in the der uh, derby against Sparta, uh, Dessas in stoppage time scoring the winner. Uh, notable shots. It was actually quite a goal filled round. Uh, Z getting another win. And then Utrecht, a big win over Willem Dwey. And go ahead, Eagles against Fortuna City at 4-3. Looks like a fun game. The Eredivisie having a 3.165 goal average. I guess a lot of this is down to Ajax, but you know, also PSV and others uh, do score. League still very much for Ajax. So, that's it from me from Northwestern Continental Europe. Haha, <laughs> that's a qualifier. Uh, please drop a line below if you want to add any, anything what was happening or what, what I've been talking about. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel. I'll see more. Talk to you soon. Bye.
Hey Dan, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click that little bell so in order to stay updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a good day.